Lee, how are you doing? Good mate, as I, always. I kind of know what you've been up to anyway because I've spoken with you quite a lot through lockdown. I know you've been getting back to a bit of hands-on tool building work and all that. So what, go on, explain how it's been for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm. I, I can't say they're honorary. Is that honorary Yorkshire honorary. man? Is that the honorary Yorkshire yeah. man? That's um, so. Yeah, I haven't. I've adapted everything bar the accent, but yeah, been back, been back. I, I never really stopped working. If, if anybody knows me and stuff, not I wouldn't say I've got a hard life and I have to work a nine to five, but I do try and do some manual labour at some point throughout the year. So normally when I go back racing properly, like at the TT and everything, I won't. But um, over the winter time, I do if I'm not in New Zealand or whatever at home. I just go mad in the house, so I don't mind actually getting out. I'm lucky to have good people and sponsors and family, but you no, know, Christy's dad and stuff with with building companies and stuff to. Be fit to jump work. in and out, yeah, because most people won't tolerate you buggering off for two months. Yeah yeah, 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 for two months. So yeah. I try and keep it clear that I will be here for a period and not, and it's just easier that way. You are a pure roads man. That's how you make your living. That's your team is predominantly set up around Northwest TT, yeah. Ulster, the big road races. You lost that last year. Pretty quickly, you realised that I need to do some racing, and you went to do British Super Sport. And actually, I reckon you surprised <laughs> yourself a little bit. I think. The, the big thing was, like all the years before where I've done one or two random races, all I ever said was, I don't want to commit because I'm, pe like at the end of the day, if I make my whole living at the TT and I break my collarbone or leg two weeks before that, yeah, trying yeah. to finish fifth in a British Championship race yeah. where I've got 200 quid, it just, it's, no, it's no business plan whatsoever, do you know what I mean? And I'd said that quite a few times, and then the TT was cancelled, and I sort of went, "Oh Can't say shit! That. I need to, <laughs> <laughs> I need to uh, sort of sort myself Man out here and have a go." So yeah. I says, "I'm either going to look like I've been talking shit for <laughs> for the last few years, or else get stuck in." And I think it was really nice to be fit to commit. And the big thing now is I haven't really took any more risks. I was be probably better off because I'm riding with no disrespect to the middle field, but at, right at the front, they're obviously better riders normally cleaner riders and safer riders. So I've realised now that I've took no more risks bar a wet crash at, at um, Donington. Right. To be at a better speed, I'm riding better, more comfortable at that speed and stuff. So I've realised that I should have probably done that before, but I was I was just worried about the risk. So it's it's helped me a lot more than people really know, I think, as a, as a whole in the rider. Were you it. surprised yourself? Yeah, I, I, I would... Ex Honest to God, I probably never thought I was going to win a race. And then after I did sort of one or two, I thought, I'm, I, can win one, I can have a go at this. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? And yeah. to be honest, I had a chance maybe twice to win to win two races. Don't at, one yeah, and snared it and I missed the gear and stuff. And um, if I'm truthfully honest, the boss put a bit of a bet on my mate snared. And so there was a few few quid on the table. So maybe that's why I was on for the win more than, <laughs> more than anything. But... Yeah, I honestly believe then, and I now I believe going back that I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have a go at trying to at least I would I would like to win again in British Jet because a long time since I won a race probably and it would be a big gap and most people don't normally come back from road racing to to British Championship and no. you know it's like Hickman's different because he's stayed there the whole time and yeah he, he, never he is a B, yeah, yeah he is a BSB rider so I don't know any road racer that's come back from road racing and been on the podium or or won a British Championship race. So for this year, uh, disappointing news really, uh, kind of inevitable. Uh, lost the Northwest uh, TT first, we yeah, lost, TT and then right. Northwest. So how does that affect your plans? I guess you were building twenty one around the TT again. Yeah. So um, basically, I think I had a, we had a pretty good idea as a team, and the team's quite compact. So we're not having to make you know corporate decisions. You know what I mean? It's a small team, and we all talk logically and stuff. And we sort of realised like the bike we had bikes, the new BM from last year and stuff. So we were lucky we haven't laid out any more money than we would have if we were going to do the TT. And the only thing we have done is we sort of realised that if the t the roads probably weren't going to come off, and we've got a good staff, and them guys wanted to do something else, so we've hired another. Uh, young kid Damon Reese to do British Superstock on the BAMs that I probably would have used on the road. So it's worked out good in that sense. We've got a top, top rider, do you know what I mean? And, and you still in British Supersport? Yeah, and me in, in Supersport. It's weird really, because I sort of had to sort out the deal. So that's the first, like obviously I run the team quite a lot, do you know what I mean? And it's something I enjoy doing and everything, but that's the first time I've had to sit down with somebody else and- A rider? Yeah, give them, like I spoke to a few people and, Give them, it was a weird feeling, do you know what I mean? Because I understand you're 
playing for someone else's career and most team managers that haven't been riders that would never enter it. their head mm -hmm. you know I mean the last thing you want to do is do a bad job by someone so um yeah that was interesting I think sort of sorting that part out but yeah really happy with with getting Damon and stuff and he's he's keen if you're willing to travel across the world to ride a motorbike you're you're putting everything into it aren't you so are you allowed, when are you going to be allowed to, to practice? When are you are thinking about getting out on a bike? Honestly, I, I've give up planning things because we are ready. If someone said we could go test next week, the, all the bikes are built, they're ready to go. But I'm not even going to put a date on it because you put a date on it and it gets moved back and then you get a little bit frustrated or whatever. So until someone genuinely says everything's open and we're going to ride, then I'll... But I think probably April earliest, maybe, if, if you were going on what's happening right now. And until then, you keep it on with your YouTube stuff? Yeah, just, just it, it sort of keeps me sane more than anything. I enjoy, it. Yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy doing it. And I'm, obviously, most people know me, I'm not bad at talking. I can talk, I can talk quite well, but it's made me realise how, it kills me saying this, how good you are at what you do or Matt or whatever, you know what I mean? It's, it's a lot different to try and ask somebody a question than just sit there and and spew out your guts about how awesome you are to somebody else, you know what I mean? So I've really enjoyed it and lucky enough um, Christy can do the editing and stuff. I can't even send an email, so that's just, I just don't even yeah, pretend involved. to try because I just, I can't do it. It's just something like, some people can do things physically and mechanically and other people are good on computers and stuff and I just, um, it's not for me. In Northern Ireland, you grew up in Inniskilling. Yeah. It's, compared to the amount of people there, it's a lot bigger sport is motorcycling yeah both short circuit and and pure roads than it is anywhere else almost in the world i would say yeah i i i think you could say confidently per size of the country and population and per the amount of like top level i'm not putting myself on this bracket but top level uh motorbike racers throw from like the Laverties to Johnny Ray yeah, yeah, yeah. and Erwin's there's and, been loads of them over yeah and even like your whole career there will always have been a top Turn another night. Yeah. yeah, and the funny thing is that none of them come from where I, Richard Britton's the only rider that comes, and Josh Elliott comes from where I'm from. Most of all the rest are like Erwin, Seely, Ray, all of them are within 20 miles. So all that top product of our country all comes within a 20 mile radius. You know what I mean? The chances of that in England, even most riders don't even live within 20 miles from another rider. Not but, at all. You know what I mean? So it's, and, it's weird. So really. my question would be, did you have heroes that were bike racers as a kid? Yeah, obviously Richard Britton, because he was like... Local. This, yeah, my dad knew him and stuff, and I, I was lucky enough to know him as well, but I was too young to fully understand, but old enough to go, oh, this is, you know, this is... I can remember him riding the Rizla Suzuki at the North West, and I just thought, this is... Imagine a factory team coming from this boy that lives in the town to give him... The bike ended up being a, a bag of shit and nervous, and you know, it was no good for what they wanted, but... It was that something like that. I just thought, my, how does that even happen? You know, when you're from this little village and stuff, and now I obviously understand all that, but at that time, it just absolutely it blew my mind to go to the Ulster Grand Prix and stuff to watch. I had no aspirations then to be a, a track racer, really. Well, you must, have just... had, you must have had aspirations pretty early because you were reasonably young when you were into British Championship stuff. Yeah, I, I played football until I was about 16, 15, 16, and I was quite decent I wish I maybe had stayed there now I'd be a few quid better off but I um yeah I sort of raced motorbikes by accident I always had motorbikes and then started racing a little bit by accident Josh, Josh, Josh Elliott was, was racing mini, was racing and mini bikes and stuff and then that, started that but yeah I was only racing for two years and then I come to do the junior super stock and luckily enough I won that um, and that sort of started um I think the the biggest thing was that we couldn't afford like we were just a normal my dad was just a tailor a normal middle class not even middle class person I suppose and I knew that if we didn't win it was I was lucky enough to be on the last part of the bubble where a little bit of talent could still get you a ride whereas now unless you've got money you're a little bit snookered it can yeah, still you're, happen, you're right? snookered it, the yeah. chances are slim do you know what I mean and I was literally just on the last bit of that crest where you could still sneak through sort of thing so yeah if I if I had come sort of good now I, there's no chance I'd be and the, your British Championship stuff your, your junior super uh, stock yeah was that just lad and dad stuff? Yeah, we come, in, dad? we come in a van. We bought a, an R6 off Raceways. Two, which obviously turned up. They didn't know who we were, Joe Bloggs. And I just said, um, would you help us? You know what I mean? And he says, honestly, we're too busy and stuff. And then the first sort of two or three meetings, I was up straight on the... I think I only got out of the 10, is it 10 or 12 rounds? I think it was on the podium 10 out of 12 times or something. 
And then about three meetings in, I remember Steve come up. He's a really good bloke. Yeah, and from yeah, that yeah, day, Steve. we've been friends pretty yeah. much. And he come over and he sort of says, oh, well, if you want to like put your tire warmers on at the front of our garage, we'll help you out and stuff. Yeah. And then... And then they helped us the rest. Not not massively, but just enough. Like my, my dad never raced nothing. Do you know what I mean? He once said to me in the qualifying, and he says, "Why did you not pull in in the session?" And you know everybody pulls in. I says, "Dad, if I pulled in, what would we have changed?" <laughs> <laughs> what do we have? Yeah, he, he says, "Fair point." He says, "Just just ride round." So that was the way it was. And I think in that class you can get away with that. Do you know what I mean? You couldn't go up to senior super stock or super sport and get away with them things but in that class i think if you've got a little bit of ability and the bikes are pretty much all the same and stuff you can sneak um you can sneak through and i think that's what i did where did the roads come from you, again northern irish yeah. kind of background you, you're almost led that way anyway yeah there have been so many good yeah there has yeah that's honestly that's the main i think if you won a british championship or won the northwest in our country the northwest would be seen as a bigger event or especially the tt but yeah. honestly my dad didn't really want me to to go down that route and i i don't think i was good enough to make it as a, a full like I, I was never going to go to world championship at best i would win some british championships and stuff and i got the chance with the team i'm with now currently to go just as a bit of fun and gaz was writing for them at the time um, as the number one rider and stuff, and I just went. And I just thought this is absolutely mint. You know what I mean? I, I really enjoyed the atmosphere, and it was a bit. I'm pretty laid back, eh? And it was laid back, and I just, I just thought, I, I just love absolutely everything about this. And at that time, British Championship was getting more money involved, and sometimes a guy that probably wasn't as good was paying for a better bike, and, and got to be yeah. yeah and it was just, that, and then yeah, you yeah. start crashing because you, and it just, it was just a snowball. And then I just thought, you know what, I, I don't enjoy. I started this because I enjoyed riding a motorbike, and I'm not, I'm not doing it. And then I, I joined the, like started doing road racing, and that whole just lit a fire up in me again. Too. And and at what point did you feel that you can make another career out of being a road racer? Which you've done now successfully. I think, I think honestly, the so like the first time I went to that Northwest, I think maybe finished fifth or sixth, and I was battling with Gary Martin and Connor Cummins, and I thought, you know what, this is, I'm not bad at this. You know what I mean, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know whether I'm a bit stupid or naive or whatever. And then that was the same year it was my first time at the Ulster Grand Prix, and I was the fastest newcomer, and some bloke. Uh, Horace and he's not really done anything since then. He was second. Yeah. Me and him, me and him were, yeah, me yeah, and him we're, were, were battling, and we've been good mates since then. That's two thousand and twelve or thirteen, maybe. And uh, yeah, so and I was on the podium actually, my first ever time at the Ulster Grand Prix. And then a few people sort of said, "Oh, you're you're not bad at this sort of thing." And then the next time I went back to Northwest, I was straight on the podium and all again. So. But it wasn't even that. I just loved it. I remember the, even the first time at the TT, I thought, somebody's going to step out here so you can't and go, it. this is illegal. You're getting arrested right now. And I did about five laps thinking that for... But you know what somebody once said to me? I remember a, a, a good mate of mine who was a lot older than me, uh, a guy called Pete Moore, who was my inspiration when I started racing, yeah. I was 16. And he saw me, th he was 30 then, and he saw me through a lot of the times when I would have packed in or not yeah. knowing what we were doing. I made a mistake with a bike and it, it, the wheel would have fallen out or whatever. Yeah. And he kind of saw me, oh, no, steady on, out, you know. And kept me going the right way just through experience. Yeah. I remember he did the Manx four or five times, loved the Manx. Then he stopped for a few years, then he came back, couldn't leave the Manx alone. Never good enough to do the TT, and he knew it, yeah. but he loved the Manx. And he loved the TT course. And, and I remember it frightened me a bit. He said, oh, You should have got the Manx, you know, it'd be all right, you've got a little bit of stuff going with you. And he said, Look, I said, oh, I'm a bit frightened of it. He said, Listen, if you, you ride road bikes, right? Yeah. I always rode road bikes. He says, If you could set off from your house, and have a 37 mile, pick your own route, no cars, nobody coming the other way, and no speed limits and no police. What would you do? I said, I'd love that. He said, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Same thing, isn't it? Yeah, and I remember the very first time, it probably took me 15 laps until you stopped thinking about where you were going. Yeah. And I got to the end of the first lap and thought, I've, I've flown, like, I've not flown as in speed, but I've got a flow around yeah. here. And that was like, oh, this is some, but you know, and then you start looking for a bit and a bit and a bit, and it's just addictive, isn't it? Because you're not racing somebody else, you're pinching an inch. How hard is it to get the bits now? Hard now, yeah. I think I think I was smart enough when I was lucky enough to win the TT um, in nineteen that I fully committed to riding a super sport bike. That was one of the things, and I know I'm not big enough. I've been on the podium in a super stock race at the TT and stuff. I can just about hold on to one for four laps, but I'm never going to win a super bike race. I know that. So I don't waste my energy trying to do that now. Whereas at the start, I was like trying to do this and trying to do that. And I was just, I was not really. So for about four or five years at the TT, I'm under, underachieved. I, I, like I think I did anyway. 
And because I was trying to do all that, whereas then the first year I goes, right, we're going to have a go at Super Sport. And we're on the podium with Super Twin. And then the big bike results stayed the same because that's sort of the level I am. And yeah. that's it. Unless somebody drops but, out or whatever. But yeah, you haven't spent too much time detracting from Yeah. And that, that was the only difference, really. People say, why, why have you suddenly got far? I haven't. I just dedicated a little bit more time to the thing I'm actually, which is what you do in life. And if you're good at something, you, you commit to it a bit more. And that was it. What's the difference between a super sport and a super bike? I know everybody talks about the big bike. And essentially, there's, you've probably got another 50 or 60 brake horsepower, same way. Yeah, yeah. A little bit more grip, just, maybe. It's just the physicality of it. So, like, I'm 65 kilos. So, if you think if, if you were doing another sport like weightlifting or any other sport, I would be in a 65 kilo bracket. Yeah. But I'm competing against some guy that's six foot, like Connor or something, with big long levers. And he's a little bit heavier, calms the bike down. So for him to make the bike turn at 140 mile an hour, he puts in 40% effort. I am putting in 100% effort. Yeah. I'm swinging off this the handlebars like a monkey out of a branch. Do you know what I mean? It is hard work for me. And for me to do that for six laps is just, it's too hard. That, and that's the difference. Whereas the 600 is just a little bit gentler. And if anything, you ride the 600 harder. Yeah, because in it's terms of speed. Yeah, yeah. It, it's screaming, especially through the corners and everything, because it, You've, your margins are even less and you haven't got the power to pull you down the street so you have to really work on getting onto it but it's just a little bit a little bit calmer to ride as far as the physical side goes and um, yeah that helps me a bit fun stuff now i've asked everybody this uh if you mm -hmm. if you were sat on a grid any any circuit you're ready to go you can have any bike you want and you can have any other people first two rows who would it be you can have Alive, dead, retired, or could I, I, I think even, because it's something, somebody asked me in a, a question before, would you rather win the MotoGP um, Grand Prix or win a senior TT? And I says, I'm not going to win either, but one is definitely closer in my grass than the other. Like, Moto, <laughs> MotoGP is never, you know what I mean? I never even dreamt about going there because it was just not for me. But I, I, even now, to, I think to ride a current... All old bikes are amazing and everything, but the chances of falling off one is massive. Like you think like proper five on the Grand Prix bikes are just scary, aren't they? Whereas you look at a current MotoGP bike and you could just come into the engineer and go, put a load of electronics on it, make it calm, and then just work your way off to, to learn it. You're not doing that on a 500 two stroke. Well, I, still, I still think you'd love a 500. I still think, all right, 500s were real easy to ride until you got to that last sort of second. <laughs> yeah. And then they got a bit more difficult. Yeah, so I think, yeah, maybe in that sense. But I, I was lucky enough to ride Kenny Roberts Jr.'s bike at Spa. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. At that's Spa. A, that's and I, I honestly think I'm never going to... That track and that bike, and it was at that... Um, it was a really big classic event and stuff there. Yeah, and bike is classic. Yeah, yeah, it was just an amazing event. Lovely people. And to, I was, I was, I got to go on the best bike there, yeah, without without yeah, doubt. Yeah. So I think to to beat that would have to be uh, maybe getting to go on something like really nice like that at the TT, where I know I'm going and stuff. I, I think um, that would obviously be a, a very special thing. I know you're in your DAF stuff. What you what you're working on now? I know you've got one or two bikes. You have built an uh, absolutely stunning uh, RS250 on the really late model. I think it's maybe or six or yeah, seven. So, yeah, yeah. I, I honestly. Um, so when when my dad passed away, I went through a bit of a midlife crisis and bought bought stuff that I probably couldn't afford, <laughs> if I'm honest, at the time. But it was taking my mind off it, and I've I've now ended up with an unbelievable um, bike, which I I haven't even rode since or anything. But that's it reminds me of that time and everything, and I'll never ever unless the the bank man's at the door and we can't eat sort of thing. But I'll never ever sell it, and uh, but it's it's and there's parts on it that people give me that you couldn't buy like yeah, factory proper, factory, yeah, stuff. Yeah, proper yeah. factory stuff and I was lucky enough to get when I said I was building it and stuff so I think it'd be a disservice to them people that you know what I mean were good enough to give me the bits or well I obviously bought some of them but I got given quite a lot of bits and I would never I would never sell it but yeah I, I think I was born at the wrong time because everything I'm interested in is, old. is, is old stuff yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I figured that yeah so um but yeah like I, I just like all sort of not really old but like 80s 80s stuff i just think everyone was cooler then wasn't it do you know what i mean and retro paint schemes and people were and not people the whole re racing then was cooler than now because racing then is a little bit more like road racing you know what i mean it's still yeah, raw a little bit more you do what you want bit, yeah a little bit working on your own bike a yeah little bit, yeah and they've got more respect 
riders nowadays, I don't think, probably in British Championship, respect each other enough. Do you know what I mean? Because it's a very dangerous well, sport. Don't you think that's a difference? And I still feel it. You, you get a different feel in the paddock. BSB is brilliant. Yeah. They've done a, a stunning job of yeah. making it a big show. Yeah. The big crowd. It's all, it's all kind of front of house still. Yeah. But the feeling in the paddock as a rider or ex-rider is not... You don't get the same kind of brothers in arms feeling no. and, and, and kind of friendliness yeah. that you get at the if road. You, you go to the TT and I see some guy, I might be in Park Fermi or the winner's closure or whatever, and a boy's just gone through on his lap. He hasn't even got round on his last lap. And, I, and you look at him and I go, fair play, mate. Do you know what I mean? I have as much respect for him as I have for Connor or Bruce or Joe. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Because he's out there and Take he some is, doing, it does to get off your ass, going. get a license, yeah. go through the mental flipping yeah, torture it's, it's, you've it's, got. It's, and it's, sit it, he's as nervous that. as I am yeah, yeah, yeah. with a chance of winning. Do you know what I mean? So that's the big thing and you walk around the paddock and everybody says hello to everybody yeah. and it's um yeah, you can you try and look after each other a little bit i know yeah some years ago you had you missed a break you miss your breaks or you kind of somewhere went wrong yeah, with yeah. this and you you shunted into josh brooks yeah, yeah. a famous and, uh, shot yeah like oh you, like at the time like i remember before before josh started road racing really we wouldn't have been that close do you know what i mean i look at him he is a proper british he was proper world superbike level and he hadn't even got out of the bills, and the first thing he asked me was, "I okay?" And after you shunted him, after I'd put him in there, and I just thought <laughs> that that takes to not be angry at that. That is like the trigger point. If you're yeah, going to hit some everybody. man, yeah, you're hitting him regardless of what has happened. And that something at that point now, I would if someone I was in the conversation and someone said something bad about him, it I couldn't hold back from trying to defend him. You know what I mean? Because it, it, people don't realise how good of a good of a natured thing that is to do at that time. So. Yeah, you do so. notice that the that the Rhodes lads are, are typically more friendly with each other, and you go to Macau, you'll have a bit of a flipping oh, night yeah. out on Macau, you'll have a party here, or yeah, what, yeah. You know, when we can. Yeah. But you do notice but that I, more I think, about. I think the biggest thing, so like at the TT, um, quite a lot of the time, me and Dean would park pretty close to yeah. each other, and that feeling for the when the forty-five minute buzzer goes off, half an hour buzzer goes off. Nobody else understands what that. Like, people can be around you and they can love you to yeah, pieces. Yeah, this, this, this is the buzzer to tell you how long it is before the race starts at the Alman because yeah. it's quite a spread out paddock. Yeah, and me and him will either be in my own and at my camper, or his own and at his Crapping camper. Yourself. Just talking, we will be talking about <laughs> crap, anything that takes your mind off. And he can talk. And to both, him. Like, oh yeah, and both will be trying our hardest to help the other person out. Yeah. You're not going the British Championship. And somebody sat in somebody's camp were trying to hype the other guy up to go and do you know what I mean? No, you're trying to sack him Just, out. Yeah. And yeah, we're yeah, there we're trying to help each other. Yeah. You know, that doesn't that doesn't happen in a lot of sports or anyone that I know, do you know what I mean? So it's just a mutual respect for do you know what I mean? And if, when I won, he was the first person to come over when he wins, I'm and it's for like that for anyone because you know at that time in the day they were better than you were and that is it. Do you know what I mean? Because there wasn't because somebody passed and run somebody off, you were racing yes. that one piece of tarmac. Yeah. So therefore, they were faster around there than you. Fact. Nice one, mate. Bottle.